So here's what I got here. If you look at this, uh, Seth called and got a quote yesterday for a whole life policy. Okay. Um, is there any way to, is this any way to make the numbers are actually? Um, Danny Jack's over here looking for you. Um, while I'm doing all that, so if you look right here, okay, this is the monthly premium that he went over. Okay, there's basically oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, you know you can kind of back off. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to Good to go. All right, so you have cash value life insurance, which is whole life, universal life, right? Mm -hmm. Cash value life insurance builds up cash value, okay? Now, what I asked a couple people to do is get a quote, okay? Call an actual company and get a quote, and this is what Seth came up with, okay? His is three ninety two dollars a month. That pays for the cost of insurance and the cash value, Okay. Now, we've gone over this a lot of different times in a lot of different ways, but I want you to be able to ask questions on this, okay? So, the cost of insurance and the cash value, 392 a month, okay? As you see right here, this is the cash value guaranteed to grow at 3%, okay? Now, what happens here is some of this money is going into the cash value every month, okay? And it's kind of like a savings account. So, if money going in here every month, let's just say this grows to be $15,000. Okay, so you've got 300000 as a death benefit. What that means is basically if either his wife or he died, one or the other would get one, the, the remaining would get 150 Okay, that's the death benefit. So the 392 a month is the premium. But now here's the thing. Most of your people, your clients, they're not going to have this amount of whole life insurance because they can't afford it. $392 a month is very, very expensive. So what are they going to have, you think? A lot less than the death benefit. They're gonna have a small cash He's got value. right here. Oh, okay. yeah, we're good. So, um, what are they gonna have? I'm sorry. Small cash value policy, and then right, not it. enough coverage to protect their family. Right. Yeah. So, what does that mean? Yeah. Means they're still paying too much. They that mean, means that, yeah, there's a lot of there to have the amount of coverage that you need. When I did this, they told me that I need to get fifty thousand in whole life versus a half million in term because I couldn't afford what they quoted. Knowing I had a mortgage, knowing I have kids. They're underselling you. I'm sorry? They're underselling you. Yeah, well, they're trying to push something on me that isn't beneficial to my family. Right. That's what they're trying to push on me. So let's just say that I died with not enough coverage. What happens to my wife who works at Regions making $2,000 a month and my three year old kid? My right, income's gone. She's going to have to get another job. She's going to have to get another job or marry somebody who makes a bunch of money like I do. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> no, but I mean, let's think That's about that. Right. Let's think about that. Um, what they're saying to do is basically to buy that product, don't have enough coverage, basically. Right. Why? Because they make a bigger commission, a lot more commission. So here's what's happening 392 a month. Some of that money is going into the savings plan. Okay. 150000 death benefit on each. Now, what happens to this savings if they die? They don't. They don't get both if they die. No, no, no. Exactly. So why would you pay for two things if you only get one? Is there anybody else that can come in? Okay. Well, I was talking to somebody yesterday. They said that they use it as a bank account. They use it. That's a good thing. They tell you to borrow from. It. What did they tell you? Anything? Uh, she said, "Yeah, if I needed to borrow, that I could." You know. Okay. So you're paying for you're putting money into an account that grows at a 3% interest rate. It's your money, but if you take any of it out, you have to borrow it. Right. They don't explain it like that, like I just explained it. No, they don't. If they act like it's a benefit to borrow that money. Right. Right. Guys, this is your people around you that you know. This is what they are paying. This, this is what, this should piss Seth off. I bet Seth Seth's more points. Because this fact, they were literally gonna sell him this money. You got a, a how old your daughter? Three-year-old girl. And they wanted to sell him this plan when in reality he needs way more coverage. Right. Okay. But here's how it works. Okay. 15000 Now here's how it works. Okay. You pull, let's say you pull $5,000 out of your own money. Let's say you do take out a loan for whatever reason. You have to pay that back at 6 to 8% interest. 
Okay, you gotta pay back six to eight percent interest. Yes. The one I did on training the other day at night at age 90, let's go, let's go back here. It was a hundred, it was a hundred and twenty-two thousand dollars at age nine. That uh I believe Drew sent me. $122,000 at age 90. So if they cancel their policy, they can take out the 122, but that death benefit goes away. You can't get both under any circumstances. Is everybody with me on that? Yes, sir. No matter what they tell you, you're not going to be able to take this money out without consequences. It says that in the contract. It says it in the contract. Nobody yeah. reads the contract. Yeah. That works. But it say, I can make this sound amazing. The bank's only given 1%, you get three. It builds up a savings plan, but if you die, you get a death benefit. So you got the best of both worlds. It's amazing. Coach, let me ask you a question. Say, let's say somebody borrowed from that 122. Yep. And they switch over to one of our policies. Are they obligated to pay any of that money back? That they had? That's no, that's surrendering the policy. Let's say they pull this $5,000 out and I meet with them. And I tell them, you're going to have to pay that back with interest. That's when they're going to start getting a little upset. Right. And what I'll tell you them is the good news is we can pull the rest of that money out. It's all yours. And I can get you in the plan down below, which I'm about to show you. Where you're going. That's surrendering the policy. When you surrender the policy, you get all the cash value, and there's no more debt benefit. Does that answer your question? I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that when they, so when they, Come over to us and they surrender the policy that the insurance, the other insurance company can't come after them for the amount that they bought. No, they cannot. Go ahead, Drew. Do they get uh, a fee or anything for taking that out? That Some of them charge fees. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> fees and interest. Okay. Yeah, they'll have a processing fee and they'll charge interest. That's right. So that'll be a fee to take my own money out? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's the player already. I'm excited about that. For the red contract, I'm done. When you say <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, don't say that. <laughs> All right, but hey, look, I'm going to tell you something, man. It's bad. It, it, we laugh about this because we know. Right. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Guys, if you call anybody, who, who's that? Guy, well, you got a quote. What did the guy say to you? He told me I was a very smart guy for going home life. Very smart guy for going all lot. Right, Sid. <laughs> he was a very smart guy for selling it to you. Yeah. <laughs> and he was literally talking about excitement, saying, man, you're a very smart guy for choosing whole life. But well, guess what? We give you the term for 10 years at this amount. And then we'll convert it over to whole life when that 10 year term ends. So, so here's what's happening. And I've had what they're wanting to do is they write these short term policies. And that's how these guys, like, think about it like this. Let's say I determine I did uh, cash value. And I was going to be in business for 20 or 30 years. One way I would generate business is I would go back to the book of people that have term and I would call them and say, Hey, you know, your term's about to run up in two or three or four years. And it's going to go from a hundred a month to a thousand a month. We need to get you locked in the whole life. That's what they do. <laughs> they go to their own book and try to convert term to whole life. If I wanted to generate business as a whole life agent, that's what they want to do. You know how I generate more business? I did it yesterday. Somebody got married. I called and said, hey, we need to add your wife. Not, let's convert you from one policy to another. Right. Your mm -hmm. life changed. Let's increase your business. Uh, let's, let's add to what we need. Let's protect what we need to protect. Yes. So it's just a different way of thinking. But people, some of y'all that write a bunch of business, like if you sit down with the Danny Higdon or David or Jay or Seth or, the, you know, Dad, some of these people that write a lot of business, those people who tell you you got to be a smart man for getting whole life, they would feel like they hadn't been in the business for a day if they sat down with us. Why? Because they're ignorant to what we know. They cannot compete. And the guys have been around a long time just don't want to believe it because <laughs> then they have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's just the reality of it. You cannot mathematically beat what I'm about to show you. And a lot of y'all know that, but you haven't gotten pissed off about it. That's the difference. That's the difference, right? The reason I told Seth and, and some of these guys to call and get their own quote, you can, because I want you to feel like what they would do to you. Yes. Right? That's the point. I remember how I felt when I called State Farm. I remember what she said to me. I remember the same type of stuff. I want you to feel that and use that next time it's time to set appointments or prospects. So this is how it works. It has the savings plan. It's in the policy. They can't deny it. It's in the policy. It says you're your savings plan will build up at this rate of return. 
And this is how much it costs to borrow money, loan, interest rate. And it also says the death benefit will be paid minus any indebtedness in the policy. What is a debt in an insurance policy? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, God, I'm giving you everything that you need. If all they, I mean, they already got the product. You just got to tell them about it. So, here's the deal $104 a month for a 35 year term. What was the coverage about, Seth? 300 on me and 200 on my wife. Okay, so obviously more coverage. $104 a month for term insurance. Term insurance can be anywhere from one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years. That's basically for that amount of time. That's how much that's going to cost for that amount of time. Now, we are one of the only companies, there's only one or two more that I know of that do a 35 year level term. Okay, we're the only. And also, our term is guaranteed to be able to renew. Yeah. I'm telling you that because these other guys will say, well, when your term ends, you're, you're going to be in a bind. That's not the case with primary. Okay, just so we, we're all on the same page. So, 104 months, 35 years. That coverage is there. That means if I die right now, and this is my policy, I'm in a better situation than this one from a death benefit standpoint. My family gets more money. Seth's family gets more money on the bottom right here. Y'all all know that, right? Mm -hmm. But here's what separates it. This 288, this is called buy term and invest the difference. The difference of right here. Okay? There's no mathematical way to beat this. It's just we're one of the only companies, probably the only company that will set up this exact plan for somebody. Why? Because we don't, uh, we don't have high minimum investment requirements, number one. Number two, every one of our agents are allowed to get an investments license. That's not normal in other insurance companies. Why? Because whole life pays them all their money. You don't need an investments license to sell whole life. Why would they provide an investments license if you don't need one to sell whole life and that generates all their income? Y'all see where I'm going. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't want you to do investments. It doesn't pay as much money, right? So having that said, 288 a month, that's 860000 when this term ends. So let's say that lived to be 100 years old. In this plan, they're going to have 300000 150 on the husband and the wife. In this plan, let well, actually be closer to, how are you in 35 years? I'll be 72. So at 100, he would have closer to 2 million, but he's going to have 150 here. Y'all see what just happened? Mm -hmm. well, why is it that this is so much different than this one? There's two partners to separate. They're not connected. Now, do y'all know what these guys are doing, don't you? Yeah, they're doing it for themselves. They're doing the bottom themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. <clears throat> stuff. So now, again, your friends, family, every teacher that you know, they have this. Every teacher that you know, they have this. You already know they got it. It's like, it's like you're selling swimming pools. They already want a swimming pool. You just got to go talk to them. What you waiting on? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's the same scenario right here. Now, here's the deal, though. The idea behind all of this is not to just go sell another policy. It is to walk in, create a value that they could have not gotten anywhere else, and build a reputation about who you are and what you're about. Then when somebody dies too soon, a death benefit is delivered that changed their life forever because you got into their home, which is I've had the privilege of doing a few times in my life. Right? That's where the, that's what really, now that you know this stuff, it's really just a matter of getting in front of them. Now, on the bottom down here, what are some holes in that plan? What are some things you could get from an objection standpoint? Anybody? Is that, if is you need insurance after 35 years, was the question? What do I do? Because you need an F&A. Yeah. yeah. We're doing F&A. Yeah, that's true. But that, that's gonna, you're going to get that question. After the term, what happens? What am I going to do about insurance? Well, you're going to hope they invest it so they don't need insurance anymore. You're going to hope so. And I will say this. I'll say, Quinn, oh, that's a great question. But I know what he's really trying to say. He's been told that term runs out, and that's not the way to go. You need to get hold of it, basically. <laughs> and that's a great question. That's why I bring up the fact that, you know, that's a, perfect, that's a great question. Our term guarantees insurability. So while you shouldn't need as much coverage in 35 years because your kids are out of the house and you're out of debt, you're guaranteed to be able to renew for less, no matter your medical condition. 
It doesn't just run out like most terms. And that's how I answer that. What is the cap age on that? 95. They may have changed it to 100. 95, worst case. So, any other, any other, now that's a good question. Now, with the terms too, though, I talk about if somebody has whole life, man, I'm going long. I got to settle down. I get excited about this. Um, but, but uh, okay, so if somebody has whole life or cash value insurance, this is how we go over that. Now, you're not going to be able to fully explain it. What I encourage you to do, like I just did, what I encourage you to do is get a quote like Seth did and Cedric did, practice it, watch this video that's being recorded until you can draw it out like I just drew it out. Because you, if you draw it out like this and you have their policy in front of you, the only reason you should not close is if they're uninsurable. You're not going to get me in front of somebody with the policy and with a marker or a pencil and a piece of paper and me not close it if I have that in front of me because I've done my homework. I've done my research. And you can do the same thing. He did it. He called. He got his quick quote. He did his turbo app and he did all this and put all this together. Everybody got me on that? Yes, Any questions? Can I just ask you? Well, what do you want to that? I'm sorry. Can I add a little bit something to that? Yeah, go ahead. Can I just call that to go? So I know you can see all the numbers and everything as you are, but sometimes like people like me, I'm an emotional buyer. You know, Tyler is like Mike and everything like that. So when I'm showing I'm like, I don't think that means <laughs> Tyler got that. But me, so y'all don't understand how many people have reached out to me after Tyler died telling me, wow, I'm so glad you're putting that position because I was not. Okay. I was not put in that position and I had to suffer through this. Yeah. Either this or they had insurance to their work or they didn't have anything at all. Mm -hmm. And they had to, they had to sell everything. They had to start all new, everything. They had kids. I've gotten dozens of stories. So when you go into somebody's house, this is not what we're just selling to go into their house. Yeah. You have to understand this is what they're leaving to the family. I thank God every day for Mike because he came and not only every day what he does for me and my family, but he set us up and taught everything that we know because we can save those people from something that I never thought would happen to me. But we were prepared to do so. You understand? So like share my story, share these people's stories because they don't understand the impact that they might have and how devastating it can be. And that is what we do for people. And it's so easy, but people don't know any better. Y'all, people don't know. They don't, nobody teaches you this stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, yes, the numbers make sense. Yes, it is, but it's not too good to be true. You're getting ripped off and we have what's better. And <laughs> we also have the opportunity of a lifetime. People are like, well, I don't know if I can afford this, if they don't have anything. Well, come on and teach us everything that everybody that you know, because your other people are getting ripped off too, but you're just too damn scared to talk to them about it. Okay, so I need you. I'm gonna bring uh, Danny or David. Who's going first, David? Okay, and I'm glad Drew, because that's part of what I'm gonna hit on. Okay, so we know that the insurance side is a no brainer. Okay, uh, and one of the things that she just mentioned that's what drives, other than that, from a business side or business standpoint, the opportunity and the lives that are changed through what we do is what drives me to keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, Derek Simpson posted, texted me that about 5 a.m. this morning and said, I love you. Thank you so much for all you did done for me. He's on a beach in Costa Rica. Okay. I said, I love you too, brother. I said, I'm about to go get some biscuits and create another Derek Simpson. Well, wow. Why am I saying, guys, just five years ago, and y'all just heard Tyler and Drew, right? that's got to motivate you yes, sir. to get out of your own way, quit making excuses, quit comparing yourself to other people, and go to work. You just, I mean, what do I mean by go to work? Set some appointments and study and do a little self-improvement? Like, is that work? It's not really work. That's kind of what we should be doing. It's necessary. That's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that, but we have to get out of our own way. And ultimately, when it was my time to get out of my own way, I had to quit being selfish. I had to quit doing what I felt like doing and start doing what I need to be doing. 
And what I want to do is I want to share what you need to be doing. Not for me, but for your family and for the people around you. So maybe somebody gets to take their family to Costa Rica when they would have never had an opportunity to do that prior to primary. That's what I'm talking about. And, it's, and the good news is all you really have to do is make a decision because it's right here for you. Mm. And it's, what is it, $7 for a day planner? Seven bucks. Seven bucks. If you don't have seven bucks, well, I'll get you a day planner. And then you'll never have, not have seven bucks again if you use it. That's good. Right? That's the good news. But it talks about, okay, the job description. Now here, I look, and I know what we tend to do. I was on the phone about an hour and a half with the NSD out of Texas last night, just talking about different things, different people in the business. You've got to stop comparing yourself to other people in the business. You've got to stop doing that. You don't know what other people have going on. It is not their job to tell you everything that they're doing. And at the same point in time, if you're not doing everything you're supposed to be doing, if they did tell you what they were doing, would you do it? <laughs> if you can't, does that make sense? So we got to quit worrying about that. What I would worry about right here is this job description. The job description. That's what I would start focusing on. If I'm going to be full-time, this is what I would look at. Danny, do you track this every day? Probably four or five days a week. In my but, but when you don't track it, do you still do some version of it? For sure. You just forget to track it. Sure. Exactly. And that's not, that's, but the point is, is you all, and right now he has the biggest business flow RBP. Mm -hmm. How many appointments do you do a week, man? Probably about 18 to 20 to show up. 18 to 20 a week. Okay. Do you spend more time setting and creating appointments or doing appointments? Man, I bet it's the same amount of work. Exactly. Because you get into that mode. You're like, okay, if I'm not on an appointment, I'm going to be setting some appointments. Why? Because things are going to reschedule. Right? Yep. And, you know, what else am I going to be doing if I'm not setting appointments with appointments? I better be spending time with my family or going to church or something. Other than that, I need to be creating business if I'm going to stay in business so I build a business. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So I'm encouraging you, and I'm going to let uh, Danny take over. Last thing I'll say is I wrote two policies. Well, I'm, I'm responsible for two policies yesterday. Paying attention to that is why Tyler and Drew are in my business. Paying attention to that is why Derek Simpson's in Costa Rica right now. It's, it's not, it didn't just happen by accident. I'm either on an appointment or I'm setting an appointment. <laughs> Yesterday I wrote a policy. Guy called me and uh, he's worried about inheritance tax. He's got about a million bucks. He's going to have 1.5, 1.8 whenever he retires. And he called me and asked me his insurance amount. I said, 100000 You got 100000 I said, I, Doc, that's not enough. He said, well, why not? I said, because you got kids. They inherit this money, you know, taxes. He said, wait, I got to pay taxes? They're going to have to pay taxes if I die? Well, yeah, Doc, that money hasn't been taxed. He said, well, how much is it going to be? I don't want any more insurance. How much is it going to be? I said, $80-something. He said, all right, let's pull the trigger. That's an $85 app. That's a $300, $400 commission for a district leader. It's an $1,100 commission for me. This guy I met through training a person who knew a person who knew a person. And I generated about four years ago. Why am I going into that much detail? Anybody know? That's where it started. That's how it started. Getting an appointment, training appointment. It all led to a training appointment. It's four years later, it's $1,100 commission. Good thing mama was shopping for a new pair of shoes as I was riding. <laughs> but y'all see what I'm like, where it came from. The other policy, a guy called me. I hadn't talked to him in a year. I recruited him. He's in the oil field. He called me and said, Mike, how you been doing? I said, great. How about you? Good. He said, look, I, I can't get in my POL, but I got a guy that wants a policy. He works offshore with me. The guy I recruited three years ago. I hadn't written a policy in a long time, but he wrote another policy yesterday. Part of our business. I made an override. He made a four or $500 commission. How? It was a training of appointment of two people who quit. So, I mean, guys, I'm telling you these stories because it all goes back to getting on an appointment if you're not on an appointment. And when you're on an appointment, find somebody to recruit through that who's going to lead you to somebody that has that plan that we just talked about. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, coach. Appreciate your time, guys. Yeah, Give it up for Danny Hitchin. Woo-hoo! Yeah, I'm going to need him to raise. so happy about that. Sure. I like it. I'm nervous about my son being up here. No, I, I'm, I feel like any minute. Huh? I say I am too. <laughs> <laughs> you can Danny, but we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hey, we got, 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 got.
Y'all doing all right? We yeah, good, man. All right, guys. I wanted to talk about something a little different. I think that I think it's a pretty unique situation when you think about um, what keeps you from doing the things that you want to do. I think most people don't think about that. And I think that if we really take the time and do that, I think it can really allow you to do some things. Mike talked about some fundamental stuff, the difference between what we do mathematically and what the other guys do. David's going to talk about some fundamental stuff, how to create an environment where people understand really who we are and what we do. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, down a different path. You know, I think that there's a few different quotes that I would want y'all to take with you today. And I, I guess I'll ask for a volunteer. Because I want to talk about procrastination. Because you can understand what David's going to talk about and present yourself in this organization in the right way. You can understand the X's and O's, yeah. coach. Yes, sir. Uh, but if you don't get out and create any activity, those things aren't going to help very much. Um, has anybody heard this quote before? Do the thing and you'll have the power. No? Okay. Yeah. So this is speaking directly to procrastination. And I heard a talk this week that broke procrastination into three key phases. And my challenge to you would be to first understand that I think we've, for the most part, been in grade that people that procrastinate and put important things off for a long period of time are just lazy people. Well, the science says otherwise. And so I want to talk about what's actually going on in our mind when we decide to procrastinate. And I would challenge you to think about things in your life that send you down these rabbit holes and cause you to, uh, Aaron and I had to talk about this about a week ago. I just realized that uh, shortly after I came across this. So the first thing that happens when we procrastinate is we think of a task and that task enters our mind and it cues a certain level of anxiety. So you think about picking up the phone, you got those seven, eight names that you got last week, you spent all week getting names, you never called anybody, and now it's Sunday, and you got one appointment next week, and you gotta pick that phone up, and thinking about doing it just freaks you out. And so step two is we avoid the task, and when we avoid the task, we feel just a little, and for an extremely short period of time, we feel a relief of that anxiety. Okay, I decided not to do it. I walked away from the phone. I put the TV on. I popped open, you know, a cold Bud Light, whatever it is that you do when you're not working, okay? Catching up on my sleep. Catching up, I'm taking a nap. Okay, and then <laughs> so task cues anxiety. We avoid the task. We have a little bit of relief from anxiety. And then in a period of time, whether 30 minutes or 30 days, we're reminded of the task that needs to be done, and it all starts again. And this is the procrastination loop. Okay, and so what does a loop do? Repeats itself. That's right, man. And that looks painful. It never stops, and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. And there's a couple things that happen if you can get off of this loop for just a period of time. What are some things that you've experienced when you've been putting something off and you make a decision to give it a shot? What are some things are you? You feel the same relief, though, when you're done. You feel a relief when you're done, but guess what the difference is? You don't come back to anxiety being reminded of something you didn't do because it's done. You feel the same no. relief and it's permanent. Quentin, I think, I think if you take the activity in step one, 
take it to that energy to reward because that feeling you get when you actually do it. That's a great point. So what's he saying? So Buck's saying, man, y'all are killing this. This is great. From the Most book. people don't think about this. When you just do the task, Buck's saying step three doesn't happen anymore. That's right. over with because you did it. What Quentin's saying is step two where you mm -hmm. avoid it, you feel a little bit of relief. Okay, I don't have to do that. You do it instead of avoiding it, and you really, it's not just relief, it's accomplishment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, follow me on the difference here. Follow me on the difference of you're walking down a parking lot, and you're texting, and you look up, and a car almost hits you, and you move out the way, and you're kind of, that's relief. Okay, versus the feeling of you're in a football game, pump return, and you run it back for six, and your team wins the game. That's a feeling of achievement. Yeah. Now, one of those subdues endorphins. One creates them, a feeling of relief, escaping something, in that case, an injury. Okay? Stress hormones, all of that's going on. Versus endorphin release from running back to touchdown. Yeah. That is the second point, is that you're not avoiding things. You're taking them head on. And you're telling yourself you can get it done. Yeah. And so that's the third and final piece that I'll talk about with procrastination. Every time we procrastinate or we don't use a planner or we don't get any names or whatever task we're avoiding, you really got to understand it's it's in your brain. There's these two ballot boxes. And one of these boxes is the person that you need to be to do all the things, right? So the person that I need to be to average 15000 a month in income, to write a certain amount of business, to have six leaders each making at least 100000 a year, all these things that are in this box. But then the casing is who I got to be. I got to get... X amount of names. I got to make X amount of calls. I got to go on X amount of appointments. I need to read 15, 20 minutes a day, develop myself in industry knowledge, leadership knowledge, people skills. That's the casing. And every time I pick up that book and I read, I pick up the phone and I set an appointment, you got to visualize what's happening in your brain. You're writing down a vote for that person and you're dropping it in that ballot box. And every time you don't, Every Sunday that passes that you got names on a list and you don't call and set appointments, you're walking over to the box that says, I'm a loser. I'm a quitter. Everybody said I couldn't do it. I quit everything else I do. And you're writing down a vote. Yep, this one. And you're putting it in that box. And so the beauty about all of this is you don't have to be perfect. Guess what they call you if you run for mayor and you win? 50.1% of the vote. Me. That's what they call it. They call you mayor. It's no different. You just got to beat out that box of doubt, that box of self loathing, maybe what you think you can be or should be. And you just got to cast a few more votes for that person you want to be. So that's what I'll leave you with. Who do you want to be and what would they do? And at the top of my planner every day, I just write because I know the rest. I've been doing it so long now. What would they do? But I used to write, who do I want to be and what would they do? What would somebody that wants to win here do with the list of names? What would somebody with no names that wants to win here get up and go do when they walk in a store and they meet somebody? I mean, it's just too easy. I mean, guys, I get two, three names a day without even trying. I mean, there's people just everywhere. There's people just everywhere that want something better. And so that's a train for another time. But who do you want to be and what would they do? Put it somewhere where you'll see it. And with that, I'm, I'm, you got a question? Yeah, I'm, go I'm ahead. Keep it. If you don't mind, we'll just no, no. stuff in there. Yeah. Because what happens is if you do these on the board, you do task avoid and remind. If you do that three, four times, three, four months in a row, that becomes the norm. And then it's harder to break. Yeah, the minute you change that around and you start doing it differently three, four times, now that's the norm. If you don't do it, you, if, if not doing it, you start that process again. If I miss the task, like I, I feel like if I go somewhere and I don't get a number, 
I get anxiety like, yeah, I missed that. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I missed the opportunity. Right. Uh, so doing it enough flips it around on you. If you don't have enough appointments, you get uncomfortable. It's not enough. So yeah, I think just doing it consistently, again, not perfect, but just consistently. Yeah, and you know, Mike said earlier, stop comparing yourself to other people. There was a day where Don and Bree, two years and 10 months ago, didn't have anybody else in their business. They didn't have an agency. They were just a new agent. And we all have to understand that. Uh, we all have to, if we're not where we want to be, here's the great news. Anybody in this room can be where you want to be probably half as long as you think it's going to take. If you think it's a year, you'll probably get there in six months. But David, I don't want to cut into your time because I know you're going to talk about X's and O's, some fundamentals. So David and I work a lot together. Uh, I mean, I just, I don't know the last month that I would have been able to train everybody that needed help with training or be in all the places at once without David Hamilton. He knows the business and what I think he probably knows uh, as good as anybody in the country is really who we are, what we do. So he's going to talk about sowing them seeds in a manner that communicates that. You ready, brother? Yep, yep. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, you didn't tell me she's coming too. Always. See, Always. I would have changed. I would have been talking about her. Talk about me. Talk about her. Damn. Damn. All that. Who you guys? I'm gonna be real, real short. Baby's gonna take away like long. But um, I'm just gonna <laughs> Don't be kind of just first. Thing, first thing. There's not enough for everybody to get one, but. You know, just kind of share, share life. And oh here, some, here, I got some here, handouts. Here. Just homework. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, I'm going to kind of bring into perspective what, uh, what Mike talked about, what Danny talked about, what David's going to be talking about, because we hear them talk about setting appointments and getting in front of people who have a whole life policy, showing the math, and helping them get out of that situation, but who do we see? Who do we go help? Who is, what is Primerica's target market? Every company, guys, has them. I just ordered some shoes from Just Fab and Shoe Bass. When you go on that website, you don't see anything yet. Because that's not their target market. They're marketing to ladies. Gotta go to California. Baby yeah. gal. Mm -hmm. There's no adults on the website. Hey, so David shops. Unless they're on there. I don't know if I can shop at a I don't know if I can shop at a lake park. I don't know if I It's got that baby gal jacket on the baby. <laughs> but, you know, that's a, a parent's on there with their child. <laughs> That's not the, the market for right. adults with baby gap, right? right. So yeah. to kind of put that into perspective, we went to an event about almost a month ago now. We were invited by one of our teammates. And she was like, hey guys, there's any is there, are there any event coming up? If you want to go, I'll take care of whatever the fee is to get in there. And I asked a question, I said, What's the market? And she was like, Well, you know, it's about you know um, promoting the COVID shot. And, um, you know, some people may be homeless, some people may be, uh, you know, not have a income, things like that. And I said, okay, cool. I said, well, we'll go, you know, we'll, we'll be there to let the community know we're here. I said, but don't expect to do business there. And so when, we, when the event was over, we got a couple of names and numbers from people who were in the administration there. And one of the teammates on our team, she was like, you know, I just feel like, you know, everybody needs this education. Everybody needs this. You know, it shouldn't be to where, you know, people are poor, that they can't get this information. And I said, you're right. Everybody needs this information. But we have a call to educate and they get compensated. Okay? Yes, America isn't going around all of these given to charities, but we're not a charitable business okay yeah. our whole purpose is to educate people so that they can get the help because we can just tell them this stuff all day but if they don't make a decision right. we're not helping anybody right. Ian Prunker says all the time he says guys we have a moral obligation moral oh. obligation to close if we walk out of these homes or maybe there's a follow-up but if we don't get that client the help they need they're screwed we got to take that approach 
And so with that being said, you know, it brings me to a scripture that I explained to my team. I said, yes, everybody needs this education, but not everybody needs what can be helped with what we do. Jesus said it best. He said, the poor you'll have with you always, and I'm not putting down poor people, because it's not a matter of the poor being people who didn't have anything. It was a mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. He was talking about people in the Bible, not that they had nothing. Poor is a mindset. Poor and broke are two different things. <laughs> poor, I'm going to stay there because I don't want to elevate my mind. Broke is temporary. Okay? Yeah. So with that being said, guys, we got to know what our target market is. And if you look on that first sheet, it tells us our target market. We kind of break it down and put a little acronym. M-A-C-H-O, the macho market of the people that we want to see. Um, I met with, uh, we met with, um, I had an orientation with, with a new teammate, and I was saying, who do you know? And she's new. And she was like, well, most of the people I know, they're older, they're retired. I said, she said, so they may not qualify for the life insurance. I said, well, still write them down. Because our job is to make sure everybody you know knows what you I said, we'll go see them at a point, but we're not going to go see them right now because we want to get you the most success in the macho market. So somebody tell out, tell out, you know, a few things that the macho market is, what you see on the sheet. Plus three years in the area. Been in the area for at least three years. And, you know, that's great. However, with Zoom, that's kind of defied the odds, you know. Right. You think about when Tyler and Drew came here, they knew nobody. They were from California. When Derry Simpson came they, he knew nobody. They built their businesses from scratch. Yeah. So even though we see that in the area three plus years, there are some exceptions to the rule, but that is one of them. Give me another one, guys. 25 to 55. 25 to 55 years old. Hmm. There's a certain age range. Huh. Does that mean we don't recruit somebody who's 18, 19, 20? No. No, that doesn't mean that. Mario Arizon, guys. He was the youngest millionaire in this, in this, in this, in this business. He got recruited at 18. So there's some exceptions to the rules. However, we still want to stay within the target market. What's another? Married. 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 That's key. Now, maybe they're not married. Maybe they have a significant other. Maybe they're a single mom or a single dad. So there's some exceptions to the rule, but there's still a target market. Give me another. Homeowner. Homeowner. Own a home. If they own a home, we can help them. Even much more because they'll see the need even further. Wait a minute, if something happens to either one of us, we don't want the spouse dealing with this home. We want this paid off. Right. That's my time. I'm going out. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> Damn. So check those out, guys. That's the target market. No, especially if you do. Second sheet oh, is how to set appointments because yes. we all come here. There's a verbiage. Yes. We don't want to go saying, hey, I'm selling life insurance and you do. That's a lie. You don't have a you're, license. you're not licensed. You're not licensed to sell any life right. insurance. Uh, and then the third one is overcoming objections. Mm -hmm. So check those Great out. Good job. Good job. All right. Y'all give her a hand. Let's just kind of get into it. Um, everybody in here, uh, let's see, you work for a job. You work for a job. Kind of stay. This is one of our biggest leaders right here. I ain't going to lie to you. Woo! This girl is so coachable. When I say so coachable, she just do exactly. We've been on a point. I don't know why she got me on here. She ain't saying nothing. I tried to ask her, but they ain't tell me nothing. She ain't tell me now. She just told me I need help with training. That's it. Got That's on it. there, recruited the people. Now they are the, like top agents, right? Did you know what she was coming on the appointment for? Didn't know. But you know what? You know what? So many times, and I'm going to talk about her in a minute, and I'm going to ask her my answer the question. You know, so many people, they come into this business, and they sit in and they say, well, you know what? Sis, this is my sister. I, I'm selling life insurance now. Can you get on this appointment? Or they use this. Hey, I need help with training. Well, what is it? Well, I'm selling life insurance. We're going to do investments. I work with Primerica. And then immediately, we like, and then we try to call them and get the appointment. They're like, yeah, I'm going to be on there. Then we get on the appointment. Nobody show up. Then we find out. We're like, did you talk to so-and-so? I talked to him. They asked me a question. I told him a little bit about what we do. Hey, you can jack the whole appointment up. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to show up. <laughs> right? Because why? You get on there running your mouth, and then what happens? <laughs> right? You selling poison food because in their mind, like she said, they got they already good with all this stuff. Right. Until they so we, what she's been doing, say, hey, look, I need help with training. Right. And then when they get on there, they like, dang, okay, so this was my plan. I thought I was gonna retire at sixty five, but I realized, hey, it ain't the age; it's the dollar amount. I ain't gonna have enough money. And now everything starts over. Oh, I got, I got five more life policies. Oh my gosh, man! I thought that was the best thing. And now, guess what? Because she said it right, 
she don't just only have a client, she got agents now yeah. that are part of the business. Right. But if we we set it up on the woman. So yeah. um, everybody in this room, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, you work a job. Would you ever go to work and not make no money? Would you if the job say I can't pay you no more, but I need you to keep going to work? Would you keep going? No. Then would you keep going to work? Okay, okay. Ellis, Ellis, I know you keep going to Outback, right? Uh -huh. You would you got <laughs> <laughs> you 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 free. Not? You a damn liar. <laughs> 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 right. so, so what am I saying? Well, like you should say, I can come and educate you all day long. Man, I gave you some great information, but if I don't close you, I call you and ask you how did the appointment go? And then you're like, oh man, it was amazing. Did you close? Nah, I'm gonna follow up. I don't know. It ain't amazing. Right. Right. Like, you ain't make no money. Right. right? And you, you do that, you do that three months and see how long somebody gonna stay in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, you do that, you do that two weeks and see how long, even though they are doing for a job, but you do that two weeks on appointments with people they they not closing, but it went so good, the people gone. You people lie to themselves when they come in this business and they say, well, you know what? I'm just here because I just love people. Well, you can love people out there. I promise you, you don't make no money. You're going to say primarily didn't work. Right. But you ain't going to, you know, you're not going to say that. You're just going to slide out and go ghost on everybody. Yeah. And then when you go ghost, they be like, hey, I've been trying to contact Keisha. But man, she don't answer my phone call. It's my friend, but she don't even ask me. I went to her house and I know she did her car there. She don't even come to the door. Why? Because they make it seem like primarily don't work. Like Mike said, follow the system. Ask for help with training. Hey, can, can you help me say it? Say I need some help. Would you help me with training? So this, guess what? Now I got now I got help with training. I'm writing fast because I don't know about some more time. As a dog yeah. in you, bro, I see it. So yeah. watch this. <laughs> hey, that's help training. So yes, I got to say it. I got to say it. Watch this. I'm trying to write fast because I got my time. Too. I like oh, I mean, I got four minutes. So watch this. Good, I got to say it. Say it help. Say it's mayor. He's a qualified market, right? right. So watch this. Say it no other qualified people. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to follow me on this. When I'm on an appointment with say it, say it, while I'm getting this information from you, can you jot down about four to five people that have kids? Can you jot down about maybe four to five people that want to pay their house off sooner? Right? Can you jot down about four to five single moms that might be working two jobs that have kids that would like to spend more time with their kids? See, I'm very specific on the, on the referrals I'm asking for. Let's say say it don't do no business, but I got... Five referrals. Guess what? I call four. I call number four. I do the same thing with number four. When I came in this business, I was like, how in the world do these people stay in business? And your list run out. Your list can't run out if you know a list. You get referrals. When you get referrals, they gonna give you referrals. Anastasia, how we met you? Your mom. Guess how we met our mom? Somebody that go to our church. How did we met you, mom? That's how the business works. People think that that's some kind of scam. No, somebody going to do it with you. You go to somebody's job. Guess what? They're going to turn around and say, hey, look, we need you to go do this. You're going to meet somebody at a register if you're a cashier. And then you're going to say, hey, man, they're going to ask you, do you like your job? No. Hey, my job is hiring. Do you want to come work with me? Yeah. <laughs> that's how that works. Most of the people that come that work in the oil field, you know, they were referred to the oil field. Yeah. Hey, man, I got I work in the oil field, man. I probably can get you on. Let me talk to my supervisor. Mm -hmm. Any job does that. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, look, we hired at our job. You see job fairs all the time. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to working your own business, we got a problem with it. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to going to the league and the NFL, we got a problem with recruiting. Mm -hmm. But we sit, we sit up there and watch the NFL draft, and we sit, we don't realize the draft is a recruitment. We got people betting on the draft. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a job, we got a problem with that. When it, when it comes to, hey, look, I want to make extra money. No, I'm good where I'm at. Great. Who you know that's my stupid like you? I mean, my <laughs> <laughs> 
Somebody talked about life insurance. I'm call it life insurance. I say we create wealth now. Do you have a half a million dollars in life insurance? I mean, in, in, in your pocket right now. So we're gonna create that with your life insurance until you build that with your investment. Oh, that's it. I'm done. I'm good for the day. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't understand that. But if I was, which one would you rather? Ten thousand or half a million? But what if you was paying the same amount? Or maybe would you want to pay a little more for half a million? Maybe ten dollars more for half a million? Awesome. So watch this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create them half a million now, and then I'm gonna set up something aside, and we're gonna build that with your investments. It it, did, it does you no good, no good, y'all. We buy term and invest different. It does no good for me to write out policy in 35 years to cancel, and now she ain't got her. I'm I'm listening to me. That is not primary. Buy term and buy term and invest. Where well, if they don't have life insurance, then you better get a a particular policy that they can literally be able to pay. The life insurance and do the investment. Mm -hmm. And then recruit them. Yeah, give them one price. Mm -hmm. But do not turn around and sell them life insurance and don't sell them investment. I'm coming right behind you and I'm gonna take your client. Right. Man, mm -hmm. get that sick. Straight up in the hand. But watch this, watch this straight up now. I'm gonna take your client because you're gonna sell them life insurance and you might turn around and give them an $80 policy that they can't afford. And I'm gonna come and give them a $40 policy and invest the rest of it. And now I got a client for that. Hey and guys, I just want. Before I forget, I almost did Mike kill me. Speaking of the series six, right, best, right, right. Anybody that's serious about getting your SIE, so either you're brand new and you know I want that investment license, that ball rolling, or you got your life license, you want to get the SIE done. I'm just gonna have a quick five minutes in my office. Mike asked I me, mean, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I studied for two days and I passed the SIE. So uh, Mike just asked me, I told him he's crazy, but he asked me to share what I did and what I studied. So uh, when David's done, I almost forgot. I'll be in my office for anybody that wants to get started on the SIE process. But no, I mean, that's what it takes for us to build this office. Right. We got, like he said, we got to have, we got to have it. So we got to be able to sell it because y'all, I was talking, me and Anastasia talk all the time, and I, I was telling her how, you know, 
this office really should be flooded with people. You know why? Because we understand one thing: there is not the COVID is not the pandemic. You know what's getting ready to be the pandemic? The economic pandemic. Mm, that's right. right. And you're getting ready to see this stuff go up and up and up, and it's called hyperinflation. Yeah. And as this stuff go up and up, they job. I tell them one time: mm-hmm. what did I tell you, Juan? I said there's two things that doesn't happen. Your, your paycheck does not come with instructions and your job does not, your job pay rate does not keep up with inflation. That's right. So if that's the case and you know that, you need to have something building because guess what? If you don't have something building, then you're building somebody else's. That's, that's right. right. So have something in place. This place should be flooded with people because of the simple fact, man, I just want to do something part-time. That's good. And then now you begin to teach them to ask them for help. The new people, just ask for help. Don't try to tell them you sell a life insurance. Don't tell them you do Primerica. Don't, don't do none of that. Do what your coach tell you to do. Ask for help. Yes, sir. When you ask for help, they get the appointment. Now the coach get on the, on the appointment and do what they do. Yes, but don't try to be the coach and you just because you have so... I always said this. If you successful in another business, you really, really got to learn and be doing this at the bottom. Right. Because of the simple fact, you already got so much knowledge that it's stupid. I'd rather work with somebody that don't know nothing. That way you can start teaching and training them. That's what primarily people have problems with that. But when you do that, it's like working with a brand new baby. A brand new baby only gonna they're a sponge. And they're gonna they're gonna suck up everything. They're gonna they're gonna teach me. I wanna whatever you do, they do. Whatever however you talk, they talk. That's the same exact thing in this business. But you bring somebody in that don't they think they know it all. Man, y'all, it's gonna be hard. It's there. Most, most of the time that's not coaching people. Yeah. So I always tell people, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't judge people. Don't judge them based on because they got this, they got that going on, man. They big time in this. I said that makes me nervous. Especially y'all, oh, man. You gotta see them, man. They they run this business. They got five businesses and great and all of this. Great. Where is the person that's just hungry? Mm-hmm. Give me the person that's just hungry, not the person that think they know it all. Right? If you bring a person that's hungry, I promise you, they'll make half a million faster than that person that had five businesses that think they know it all. Well, I'm done. Juicy J.